Uh, next speaker is Dr. Abbo. Uh, 20 years of invimination emergency medicine EMS experience. He remains active in research, education, speaking engagements, and consulting. His strong interest in inter, uh, international emergency medicine led him to a career in EM, uh, emergency medicine EMS physician. He finished his residency in emergency medicine at Mount Sinai at Miami Beach and Ryder Trauma Center. Dr. Abbo serves as assistant medical director for Hallandale Beach Fire Rescue, and he's the medical director of City College EMS programs and medical director of Gator Emergency Response Unit, and is one of the only full, one of the only four instructors for the Wilderness EMS Medical Directors course. Please welcome Dr. Abbo. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good morning. So I did. Oh, I can definitely hear myself. I didn't bring any snakes, even though my hair might look like Medusa. So if you want to come up towards the front so it doesn't feel like a high school class, um, then I won't pick on you. Um, am I too loud? I have a coral snake and a water moccasin. Here? You have a coral snake here? At my house, it is less than 10 minutes away. So <laughs> I specifically didn't bring. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, different venomings, venomations um, today. Uh, it's really good to be here. I definitely wear a lot of different hats on top of this big head of hair. Um, we go through a bit of stuff and there's certain things I want to get um, covered because a lot of people, there's a lot of myths, or I should say myths, about envenomings and poisonings and toxins, stuff like that. And I'll be honest, you know, I, I did give lectures about um, body modification and tattoos, and this, and I don't have any tattoos or piercings. I don't particularly like to handle the snakes if I don't have to. That's what I have teams for. But I like dealing as a venomologist. Um, so disclosure-wise, I do love this picture. Um, this is a little baby snake coming out of an old anti-venom case. I just love the irony in that picture. So disclosures, I have no financial disclosures. Uh, I just am obsessed and an addict to EMS and all things rescue. So whatever I can do, and especially wilderness. I do, am one of the instructors for the Wilderness EMS Medical Director's course, a medical director for Venom One, and then I help start a wilderness EMS externship for doctors and doctors in training to understand better what wilderness EMS and EMS in general does so that doctors don't get in your way, right? Because we all know what happens. We all know. All right? Um, I do have a series. Uh, this is from the first part in GEMS, specifically about wilderness medicine for the urban provider. You guys have a lot more rural territory also and a lot of things going on, but even in the city of Miami, when there's a disaster coming through, it all turns wilderness, it all turns austere. So just another thing to kind of throw out, but no financial considerations or disclosures. So let's talk about, let's talk about some bite me basics, okay? You gotta wonder, do I have to baker act someone, a snake, if they bite their tongue? You know, is it suicide? I'm not really sure. So, let's talk about it. I'm gonna talk a little bit also about some of the resources and the basic care, dispelling the myths, and knowing your resources, because you already have plenty you need to know, is what I really want you to get out of today, as well as some laughs. Sound good? All right. So, um, I am coming to you from some experience, especially the Venom One team straight out of day down in SoFlo. Um, the nice thing about when I lived in Miami is, is that it was still close to the US. Um, so I will talk a bit about the, the properties and what we have down there and the experience. And it's an it's a asset that you have access to also. And then we're actually setting up another Venom bank. There's already out here in Nature Coast, Anti-Venom bank that you have is a great resource. We're starting another Venom Bank in Venom 2 in uh, Lake County, it looks like. So I get to work with people like Captain Fob, who has years of experience. We do have plenty of people that will go out and handle the snakes, whether they're venomous or not, help decide. But the other thing that we do is we have the logistics to get anti-venom. And we have almost every anti-venom that exists in the world. Almost every one. The ones that we don't have is by choice. We get a lot of exotic calls also. In the past year, I've had three consults for cobras. They are not indigenous to the US, right? They shouldn't be. <laughs> Who knows what the future with, if people let them out? A good cow. But we have plenty of refrigerators of different anti-venoms and all that we're willing and able to get to you. Because logistics wins wars. Logistics saves lives. 
right? So we can get more antivenom if the hospitals or you guys need. Um, do you note that the nice, pretty, colorful ones with a picture of the snake are not made in the U.S.? Because God forbid the U.S. makes something from a drug company that's easy to read, right? So, um, you can find me around Lake County a lot in Alachua for responding, and I'll, I take calls all the time if you have, and I'll give you my contact information um, and all. But there's a lot that goes on with nature. We are all heroes in here, and there's a lot of things in nature that can kill us. And most commonly, it comes down to stupidity, right? We're doing something that we shouldn't be, or our patient is, but we're the ones that run in when everybody else runs out, right? So we need to know how to protect ourselves also. So let's talk about some of these indigenous uh, snakes and uh, envenomings. We do get a lot of calls for all sorts of envenomings. And here in Florida, we in particular have a number of venomous things that live here. Forget the cobras like in Ocala that got loose. Well, don't totally forget about it. But he's a very exciting and funny Twitter feed, if you want to read it. Um, but different snakes have different ways to protect themselves. And that's what it's about. They're not preying on you. Although they're not carrying a gun, like the Smith and Wesson here or the Wesson Cobra, right? But they do have different means on how to. And the first one that I want to talk about is what we mostly see, and this is what we see in all the contiguous United States. This is in the crotalid family. This is one of our pit vipers here, okay? What do you notice about the fangs right here? They're huge, they're nasty, they're scary, right? This is one of the pit vipers are in the family crotalids, which is why we talk about crofab, right? So if you look here, you know, we think about these fangs and they are these large intractable fangs or retractable that will inject the venom, usually when they want to. And that's what makes this family very special. For it to be a venom, it has to be injected. If you are taking a dare and you lick a poison dart frog and you're poisoned, that's not a venomous frog, that's a poisonous frog. This is a venom, it's made by glands, it's injected. Okay, these fangs retract and come back out and that's what happens here um, with this snake. And in particular, you think, oh, it's a very rigid and they just dislocate their jaw and they go. It's actually pretty fluid. Again, here's the fang, the fang sheath, and you can see how soft and pliable the head is. Scary stuff, because they can really take a good chunk out of you, right? And all it takes is a little bit to inject of some of that venom and the toxins. I'm going to loop these together and then I'm going to talk about specifically what the toxins do, the, the venoms do. Also within the crotalid family that we see here in Florida is the pygmy rattler. The pygmy rattler full size is about this big. It is the same, has the same general venom, it's mostly a heme toxin. These have like a Napoleon complex, right? What do they do to warn you? They rattle, just like other rattlesnakes, they twerk, right? But these guys are so small, it sounds like a bee buzzing, right? Or you might not hear a rattle at all. So imagine someone going and hanging out, doing a little picnic, they put the blanket down, they sit down, they put their hand down, and there's a rattlesnake right there. The, it, he starts twerking to warn you and say, yo, bro, this is my space. But you don't hear it. You hear a little buzz, and you're like, where's the bee? And you put your hand down, and he gets you. But you don't really know where it's coming from, so what does he do? He gets you multiple times, All right? A little Napoleon complex, because, and I've seen some really bad bites out of these, okay? So the Napoleon complex, don't let the size fool you. I've seen a grown person almost die, full grown adult, and almost lose his hand because they did something they didn't, shouldn't have, and they put a tourniquet on, but we're gonna get into that. This, again, is another crotally that lives here. This, the pygmy rattlesnake is why when I go to Home Depot or a tree place or a bush, I put a little stick in and shake it before I pick up the plants because they might be hiding in there. This guy, the copperhead, you'll usually see these further north. Again, it's, this is a rattlesnake. Notice when they're young, the tail's a little green to look like a worm to attract birds and rodents and things like that. What do we have here on the left? A water moccasin. When they're young and the underbelly, they actually look like any other rattlesnake. But guess what? They don't twerk to warn you. These are one of the few snakes that can actually go full body length when they strike. They don't twerk, they don't rattle, and they're actually pretty predatorial. So if you're near the water's edge and stuff, 
Our Department of Public Safety, the institute where we have a lot of the EMS classes in Alachua County, is doing construction and it's taking a lot of water source and so a lot of water moccasins are making their way towards the buildings and the construction. I'm just waiting. I'm just kind of like hanging out nearby with my response truck like, am I going to get a bite? <laughs> all right. Again, these are all crotalids. This is the one indigenous one that really particularly scares me. And this is the eastern diamondback. This is also very aggressive. Now all these crotalids, that's why all of them have the name crotalis something or other, right? The crotalids are mostly what kind of toxin? Hemotoxin. And even as an emergency physician, my textbooks, my board exams say there's heme toxin and there's neurotoxin that'll like paralyze you or you bleed to death out your eyes, your ears, and everywhere, right? But it's not that simple. Even if you take two snakes from the same litter, so to speak, you put them in different areas, you look at the little cocktail of toxins that they have within their venom, it's a little different based on their geography, their prey, things like that, when they actually break it down. But for the most part, we're worried about them bleeding to death, so we'll check their coags and things like that. We'll worry about pain. There's also cytotoxins, so it will destroy the cells around the hand. This is why we don't want to put a tourniquet on. I had someone with a pygmy rot, Darwinism. This is our job security, my friends. So guy picks up a pygmy rattlesnake. He puts it near his girlfriend's face to scare her. It bites him. Brother then puts two tourniquets on. And then they take, drive him to the hospital. But he wanted to finish his beers. Right? So because all that blood stayed there, if he was hemorrhaging out, then it would have saved his life. But he wasn't. Instead, it destroyed all the cells in his hand. And he had to get a lot of it uh, kind of taken care of. But this is an example of one of our local ones that also has some neurotoxins mixed in as well. So I have a picture of a, someone that was bit by an eastern diamondback. I took the video out because I f knew that some of you would be sitting in the back. Because it's very hard to see, but we're not looking for just swelling and pain and bleeding out. We're also looking for fasciculations. All right, we're looking for the muscles. The swelling goes up to here, and up here you still see the muscles just kind of twinging. That's a sign of a systemic envenoming, right? Eastern Diamondbacks, they're aggressive. This scares me, right? You have a few hours. Most people don't die in developed countries um, from snake envenomings. Why? Because we get them to a place that has anti-venom or can get it. Even if a hospital doesn't carry it or doesn't carry enough, they can call Venom 1, they can call Joe Kiefer at um, uh, Nature Coast, get the Venom Bank. We don't really do as much of the call the zoos and vets and this and that. Um, it's very loaded and very complicated. I won't even get into that. We can talk about that over coffee or something. But this is the one that scares me, right? So again, what do crotalids do? It's not just a heme toxin. I just want to drive that into you. So if they're not bleeding, it's fine. No, you gotta, you gotta get them. They need to be monitored. It depends on the snake species, the location, the prey that they feed on, the rotation of the sun, global warming, who's in office, who's in Senate, right? It all depends. This snake on the left here is not a crotalid, but it looks similar and I wanted to show you how it bites and can kind of almost dislocate its jaw to be able to get those same kind of fangs, front fangs, they dig right in, all right? These up here, this is not necrosis. A hand surgeon might be called and they're like, oh, we gotta amputate. You, the ER doc might say, we need to cut this open. It's not infectious. In fact, snake venom is antimicrobial. These are blood blisters. This is a local reaction. You want to keep them closed, just like burns. You don't pop the blisters, OK? Um, some are a little bloodier than others. The other thing you know, this guy got tagged on the toe, which is a rare place for a male to get bit, because we're doing something stupid usually, so we usually get bit in the hands. Females usually get bit in the feet. So redness here, redness and swelling going up to here. These other lines here demarcate where the pain is not just swelling, okay? So this is someone that was bit by an eastern diamondback. Within 20 minutes, the swelling was up his arm. This is an adult eastern diamondback. It happened to be the guy's seventh bite. We'll get into that. So when he wasn't allergic to the antivenom, most people aren't allergic to antivenom, it's serum sickness, I'm gonna get into that in a moment. But he had an, actually an allergic reaction, full anaphylactic shock to the venom itself. Talk about a bad day, right? Look at his hand, it's hugely swollen. I usually prefer pictures of both to compare. Take all jewelry off. It's blue, 
This is a giant blood blister and hematoma and redness going all the way up to his wrist, right here and here. Okay, this is swelling. Up in his upper arm, we had fasciculations. You can see the bloody wound there, and he was starting to get blood blisters and everything right away. He also was having full-blown anaphylaxis. So his throat was closing, and guess what they had to do? Epi, full anaphylaxis and all, and they had to crank him. If someone's bleeding out of every pore, who wants to crank? <laughs> Scary, right? He ended up, so as soon as he got bit, they actually called anti, uh, Venom 1. We started bringing the anti-venom up to the, uh, by helicopter, up to them, so they had plenty more vials. He needed 67 vials. 67 vials, right? I have no fear of using the vials at the expense to save someone, but try to do things right and right for the patient. We preload them for this guy. We do Salyamedrol, we do Pepsid, we do bet, you know, Epi, the whole nine yards for that, and he needs what? Antivenom. That's the only cure. The only cure to this poison is the antidote. Okay? He did live. In fact, I, he's a great guy. I didn't, I wanted to get his permission to, he said I could use that picture. I was going to put a picture of us afterwards. He did survive. He's doing great. He had some ongoing pain here and there. Phantom pains that come and go in his elbow and his shoulder, but he survived. Why? Because they got the antivenom on board and enough of it early on. I gave a Venom lecture to Putnam County, um, and they brought, they brought a box, and there was a fire department ID on that box, and they said, that's our fire marshal. I said, what? He died by getting envenomed by a rattlesnake, and he was cremated, and they keep him at the station, and they said that he would have enjoyed the lecture, so they brought him in. What probably took his life is that back then they were afraid to use enough antivenom because the expense, is he having a reaction, allergic reaction, or serum sickness? And he may survive, I don't know, I wasn't there. If I could turn back time, right? But, we know, so you can't be afraid to do it. Most people get serum sickness because it's kind of a thing from using horse serum when they make the antivenom, but we use other animals too. Or it's an anaphylactoid reaction. Anaphylactoid reaction is different, not just in spelling, from anaphylaxis. So it looks like a full-blown anaphylactic shock. They get highs, things like that, but it's, it's anaphylactoid. It responds very well to other treatment, treatment that we already have on the ambulances, the fire trucks, right? So what do you do if you have a heme toxin, right? Who do you call? Who do you call when someone licks or touches a poison dart frog other than laugh at them, right? I just had um, the other day, and it, it's, it's such a fresh case, so I didn't put the picture in here of the airway, but you may have seen on the news that we actually had up in uh, Putnam County someone bit on the tongue by a rattlesnake. A bit on the tongue, you heard that correct, right here. It was a juvenile rattlesnake that the guy, young gentleman, we have the tease of snake bites, testosterone, so it's usually male. Tequila, there's usually alcohol involved, <laughs> right? Drives a truck, more the tooth to tattoo ratio, all that comes into play. <laughs> so he got, he, a friend brought the snake over, he was sticking in his mouth, and this guy decided to stick his tongue out, the snake nabbed him. So Putnam called me, they said, hey doc, I'm about to get on scene, we're gonna have, we have a gentleman, 29 years old, that was bitten in the tongue by a rattlesnake. I said, really? He was, and I could hear in his voice, he's like, yeah, no, really. He's like, we've got a hel helicopter on the way. We're going to be sending him to you. Here's the heads up. I said, if you really was bit in the tongue, please, and then it was disconnected. So the heat of the moment, we all in this room, how many are EMTs? How many are paramedics? All right. No matter what level we are, we're all EMS. We have the heat of the moment. There's some of those moments where we do what we need to do, right? So, and no matter what, we should be taking the call in and kind of thinking about it afterwards. What could I do different? What I hoped, and they realized afterwards, they did a great job. They secured his airway. The picture is like the bloodiest angioedema, tongue sticking out of the mouth. Very impressive, right? But they, tried, they did try to orally intubate, um, and they ended up having to throw a King Airway in, and I'm so glad they were able to finagle and get the King Airway in in time. I'd prefer someone, if you have someone that gets bit on the tongue, don't put a tourniquet on the tongue, <laughs> right? Don't cut the tongue off to make room. 
just nasally intubate him and then put him down, okay? So he was bit in the front of the tongue, but it was all swollen up. The guy's doing really well. Um, soon enough, I'll, I'll present pictures on that stuff from that case. So what do you do? Call poison control. If you can, give a heads up to your venom researcher. or have an idea from your hospitals of what capacity they have. Ah, Dr. Nelson, how are you? Have an idea about what they have um, as a relationship up front because preparation is key. Down south in Palm Beach, all the way to Palm Beach County, the hospitals are member hospitals and they'll call Venom 1 and give a heads up. So the guy that was bit by the Eastern Diamondback, the fire department immediately called Venom 1 and said, hey, we got this. And Venom, we were able to hop on the helicopter and bring it up. Right? We have Lake County coming up, we have Nature Coast, I'm up in Gainesville, we have plenty. Right? And we use our resources up front. We have no problems with delivering for free anti-venom. And if it doesn't get used, we just bring it back. Okay? Know your resources. Call poison control, no matter where you're at. You guys get the Tampa, um, the poison center, right? Unless you call from your cell phone. Did anyone realize that? I moved from Pittsburgh down to Florida and I called poison control, the 800 number on my phone, and I have a 412 area code. So get what po guess what poison center I called? Pittsburgh. So it's an interesting thing to know. I'm like, hi, this is Dr. Abo. I have a toxin, da da da. They're like, I'm sorry, what hospital? I said, Mount Sinai in Miami Beach. They're like, Florida? I said, yeah. They're like, is this Ben Abo? I'm like, yeah. It was my old EMT partner from when I was a medic in Pittsburgh <laughs> that's now at the call center, the poison center. Like, you got up here. I'm like, what? So just know that, but they'll, no matter what, they'll connect you what you need. 1 800 222 1222. You can call me on banana phone if you have a question about anything 24 7, right? You call me on my actual cell phone, but know what to do. Now, the physical care of what needs to be done and what you don't want to do is something like this first off. And I'm going to get into the little list, the, little, the sexy list of what you need to do and not do. This is a guy that I had about seven months ago now. He's a field worker, he gets bit by a water moccasin. He was very upset that this water moccasin bit him because it hurt really bad, right? So he killed it. Great. And then what did he do after he killed it? He grabs it by the upper jaw and the lower jaw and he tried to and ripped it in half. Like he ripped the jaw down to here. But guess what? It still envenomed him again. So he had the bite on the top of the hand up here and they had more bites on his thumb here. So you got double envenoming. Again, I prefer, if you're going to send me pictures or anything for documentation, um, for anything, it's best to have both hands, all jewelry off for comparison, two views. But can you appreciate how swollen his hand was? This is within 30 minutes, how swollen his hand was. That's a sign of a serious envenoming. All right? You don't have to kill the snake unless you know how to. What are you holding right there? What are you holding? Cell phone. Does anyone here not have a cell phone that takes pictures? Can you do it from a distance? Right? Take a picture, look at the markings, get the story. We can identify it. You don't have to bring the snake in your truck. You don't have to bring the snake to the hospital. Please. Right? But we'll get into specifically how else to take care of the patient itself. All right? The cure for crotalids is Crofab. Is my guy here? There you are. Awesome. One of the reps from one of the distributors uh, from Crofab is here. Crofab is a, and I'm not getting any money for this. That's, I said that in the disclosure, right? So Crofab is the antidote for all crotalids, North American crotalids, except for one specific family. But all the ones that are indigenous to pretty much every state is covered by this one product. So it's nice, and most hospitals have this. And other places will shift around if we need to get more, okay? It's nice. I really love this, this advertisement, Stop the Progression. And that's what we're doing. I want you to tell me what does the venom, the envenomation look like. Again, I'm gonna get into that in a moment. But all the things that we worry about, the antivenom will stop. It will stop the necrosis. It will prevent loss of digits. When someone's hand is completely swollen and you're like, dude, they gotta cut that hand off because they're gonna get compartment syndrome, with the proper amount of antivenom, I've never seen someone need a fasciotomy. I've never, with the proper antivenom. So for the ER docs in the room, hold off when you call the hand surgeon for a consult, right? Um, 
We'll need the edema, it's gonna take care of. Coagulation abnormalities, making you bleed out. Loss of joint function because it's so swollen and bleeding into the joints. Hypotension, pain. Pain is a huge marker, right? So when someone gets bit by this mostly heme toxin, if it's an envenoming bite, and some bites are dry bites, I don't want you to determine is it a dry bite or not. Oh, it looks like a, it's probably a dry bite, you can refuse. Well, we, as long as you get the waiver, right? Um, they need to go, they need to be monitored for a certain amount of time. Even if they have a minor envenoming, I'm gonna uh, watch them for some amount of time because it might just take a few hours. And these guys, actually, if it's a bad envenoming, seven days later, guess what? They still might need more. There's a four-year-old boy out uh, that was in the news about, now four or five years ago, he got bit by a cane break, or Timberland up Rattlesnake north of Jacksonville. Um, he got to the hospital, he got the anti-venom, he did great, it fixed all of his coagulation disorders and everything, was discharged, he was lost to follow up, then they found him, unfortunately, dead. And you can see, it, you can find the news article, it's, it's easy to um, Google, or Bing if you want. I don't really know what Bing is, so I Google it. I Google Bing, right? So you might need more, we don't know really the mechanism behind that, but, Let's stick to the basics here and the really important, juicy, sexy stuff here. It's a poison, it's a toxin, it does all these things, right? Whoops. Thank you. My monitor I kicked off accidentally. You need to know, do they have any serious systemic effects or any systemic effects? If they get bit here, where should the pain be? Right here. If there's pain in their elbow, their lymph nodes, that's a sign of systemic. If they are nauseous and vomiting like multiple times, there's some thoughts, well, if it's a snake bite, you're scared and you will vomit. How many of you have been so scared you vomited? More than once, <laughs> right? So, and then you give some Zofran, some vitamin Z, vitamin Odansetron, and they're still retching. That's still, if they have nothing less to vomit, they're still vomiting, they're retching. That's a sign of something systemic. The fasciculations up high, anything going up. You wanna treat their pain, give a little bit of pain medicine to get it a bit out of control, but I'm gonna monitor, and you need to mark the site, and you need to mark where pain goes up to also. So what I do is I have different lines. And I put a little P, I put the time on the line, and I put a P for pain, an S for swelling, and a little arrow. Because it might be going up, but it might be regressing. How I determine how much antivenom I need is based on the rate of progression and the rate of regression going away. All right? You do not to per, to put tourniquets on. I'm gonna show you that here in a moment. But we have a very well set treatment algorithm for using Crofab. Can they be discharged, things like that. This is readily available online. I do have handouts that um, our guy here gave us and some of the things and there's apps and stuff. You're not gonna be as much into this, but you, you're gonna be a resource also for the hospital at times. But know that we have a very well set algorithm that's proven that works for using Crofab. This is that example of one of the, you know, we're not even on the map here. We're all the way over here, right? So, but this is a snake that needs a specific antivenom that Crofab won't work for. But that's not indigenous here. But I put this picture in because this hand was so swollen, right? This, this is at 1020, the swelling's already up to here at 1050. You can see that line. You can see the ring where it was before we had to cut it off. All right, get jewelry off right away. That's how swollen it was. You can still see over more than 40 minutes later after the bite, the imprint of the ring. Right? And this person, when I saw her two weeks later, I could not tell which hand was bitten. I only knew because I remembered her wedding ring was on. Why? Anti-venom. Appropriate amount. So, that's a little zoom in there of that. The other indigenous snake that we have here in, that's venomous in Florida is the coral snake. Who knows, who's gonna tell me the rhyme? It's someone in the back because you didn't move front. Do you know the rhyme? Red and yellow kill a fellow, red and black friend of Jack. How about the proper rhyme of dealing with venomous snakes is, roses are red, violets are blue, don't touch the snake. <laughs> Bacon. 
Bacon's always better, right? Don't mess with them. These guys are pretty timid. They do look like a lot of other non-venomous ones, but the rhyme that only works on North American corals, red and black, venom lack, but this guy has red and yellow, can kill though. This is a neurotoxin. This is a pure neurotoxin. He's in a lapid. He's in the fam same family as a cobra, but this is pure neuro. There's three indigenous in North America. This is not on the quiz. There isn't really a quiz anyway, except for the quiz of life, right? <laughs> Florida, Texas, and the Western. Three coral snakes indigenous to the US. Florida is the most toxic venom. Technically, 20 milligrams of dry venom from this snake can kill a grown human being. One bite can deliver on average 40 to 60 milligrams. Now there's a lot of fake things about this that go around, right? These are usually timid. They're not gonna hunt you out. They're timid, they're, they're pretty shy, and pretty much everyone gets bit on the hand. Why? Because they're messing with it, right? Do you note that they are Steelers fans? All of them have black tip. That's the other way to recognize it as poisonous, right? Um, there's a lot of fa false fallacies thought about this, that that rhyme will take care of you, it won't. They have to latch on because it, it needs to suck on you and chew on you in order to get the venom in, that's wrong. Someone told me once that, well, it's not can't be a coral because coral snakes are rear fanged. Where do you see the fangs? Right in the front. By definition, a rear fang snake is called a colubrae and there's no venomous ones in the US. So front fang, they don't have to chew. If I had food in my mouth and I'm a little timid guy like that, you think I'm gonna want to let go of my food? No. Now what they lack, crotalids have big fangs that retract. These are smaller, so usually they need to, they'll try to hold on a bit harder and longer, but they don't need to. A break, if you confirm that it's a coral and it breaks the skin, guess what, it can deliver it. And I have a great example of that, all right? The Venom Interviews is a great documentary. I highly recommend it if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Um, but there's a lot of research that goes into all the venoms and the proteins and all that stuff, okay? So, which is a coral snake? Red and yellow kill a fellow stealers, woohoo, right? I do love, this is a bike rack that's in Gainesville. <laughs> I love it. So I always park my bike on this side. Coral, right? I love it. This is a case that I had when I first started um, at UF. And this is a person that was bit. He picked up the coral snake went to throw because there were kids nearby, but it tagged him. And they were told, well, it's probably not a coral. And I said, uh -huh, no, it's a coral because I'm looking at it in a Tupperware. This is the actual snake, he had it in his car, I went out there. He was tagged right on the knuckle right there. Now, coral snakes, you will not see systemic, you not see local signs, except for maybe little bite marks. We need to watch them. And commonly, it's seven to 15 hours before you see any, any effects at all. So you can't say, oh, it looks fine. It may and usually hurts if it's a bad envenoming, but it might not. It might just hurt a little bit locally, and then all of a sudden, 12 hours later, they're like And I'm gonna show you the in video and pictures in a moment. Right? So they all need a little bit of antivenom to make sure. And it can be very catastrophic, right? This person ended up having paresthesias because they, they waited a little bit, but I, I was off, I was called to the hospital. I got there, I said, we need antivenom. We mixed it, boom. Got it, he did well. Now this, and I did get full disclosure, full, full acceptance, this kid loves snakes. Um, this, is, this is Garrett, he's 10 years old. Soccer pro, likes to run around, but loves snakes. He caught a snake in a net. He brings it to the house, and he's picking it up, and his mom said, the snake is faster than Google, and it bit him, not once, but twice. This is a very large snake. This is a very large core that can be up to about three feet, right? He's out in, now if you're familiar with Alachua County and how we were, this initially came into one of our freestanding EDs by the Kanapaha Botanical Gardens, right on the outskirts of Gainesville. He lived in Levy County out in Bronson by the raceway. His mom puts him in the car and they race 
to the nearest hospital. The whole time he's dizzy, he did pass out once. Systemic effects, systemic effects. He's throwing up the entire time, that's about an hour drive. Systemic effects, scary, scary. This is all within a few minutes when it started of getting envenomed. He got envenomed twice, right? And this is a little kid. There's no pediatric dose of antivenom. The snake doesn't say, you're a big dude. I'll put more venom into you. They just bite and they put the venom in, right? So he got the same, same amount that anyone else would. And it's very rare to see this, the bruising that showed up the next day. But he got so much venom from two bites from a very large coral snake. And how much does it take? Like two drops, 20 milligrams of dry venom. What do you notice here? By the time I got called in, his eyes, this is called ptosis or ptosis, but the P is silent, just like in a pterodactyl. That's how you know a pterodactyl. You can't tell a pterodactyl is going to the bathroom because the P is silent, right? <laughs> so he's trying to open his eyes, but he can't, right? He also, after a little bit, so, and this is a whole thing, uh, this is kind of a big issue that I had because I was finishing a shift at another hospital. I said they need the antivenom and then there was a change of care and then the change of the antivenom and they didn't order it. They were going to wait and see because he's not actually vomiting but he's sitting there retching. I think I have that picture next. Him with the vomit bag. They can't open his eyes and after a little bit he suddenly complained of double vision when he was trying to play a video game because it's children's hospital, right? They get video games, lucky guns. Because he was looking down, every time he would look down, he would have double vision. He had what's called dysconjugate gaze. Your pupils are supposed to go together. But he'd look down and one would go down, one wouldn't. So he'd have double vision. He then had to, in order to eat, he'd put food in his mouth. And to close his mouth, he had to go, 10 years old, right? Here's the video again. and. You're sitting in the back, so I don't know if you can see, he's trying to open his eyes, he's trying to follow my fingers around, and he just really can't. All right? Here's follow the fingers. Can you see his left eye going? And his right eye not moving? I'm gonna play that again. Here's the one video where he can't open his eyes much. Look at his eyeballs. Look at the colored part of his eyes on this video here with the orange shirt. You can see his his, sorry, his left eye moving, his other eye is not. So that's the bite. This is a picture of the snake that mom showed us when we were Googling to kind of confirm what it was. This is him after he got enough anti-venom uh, about three days later. He still couldn't totally open his eyes. He couldn't play with his Legos because down he, unless he was holding it up here. For several months he had paresthesias, random pain, and he couldn't run. So, where is it? This is him about two weeks later. And he said, and then, sorry, this one's actually a month later after the bite when I went to check on him. He goes, he's so cute, he's like, Dr. Ben, I still can't run full speed. Because what do we do when we run full speed, Dr. Ben? I said, we look down. He said, yes, we do. So I can't run, I'm afraid I'm gonna fall in the hole. Our little soccer star can't run full speed. Imagine a kid not being able to play at recess, right? We need to do the right thing for these patients early on. But he's doing terrific now. He's actually very excited that, he's taught, that you get to see what he looks like here. And uh, of course, I gave him a Venom 1 shirt. This guy, now this is not indigenous here, but this is a cobra bite that we had in Miami. Now this is in the same family as the coral snake. Neurotoxins, right? This takes a specific, what did I say about the tooth to tattoo ratio? Right? I, I don't know if I have the video in this of his neuro exam. Yes, I do. Ready? Watch carefully his tongue on the neuro exam, please. He was bit in the hand. He ended up in Bigemini, and the hospital is called cardiology consult. What's cardio going to do? Cath him? He needs, he does, he's not having a heart attack. He's having a venom, a toxicology syndrome. So watch his tongue, please. He's getting annoyed because I'm like, open your eyes. He's like, bro, I am. So you got your tongue? There it is. <laughs> he wanted to be like a snake. He sent me that video. I love it. 
Um, so cobras, also lapids, heme toxin, they'll bleed out, neurotoxin, there's paralysis. He was paralyzed within 30 minutes. He was intubated, we got him the antivenom, and then later that afternoon he was able to be extubated. Right? Antivenom saves, right? Time saves just like EMS saves. It's an important part of this whole process. So what are you supposed to do? Um, oh, that's fine, I love my friend's kids. So this is a, a famous Greek guy, he's a Greek warrior, um, that the legend goes that he was on this island and he got bit by a venomous snake on the foot and then he ended up dying. The, every picture, if you Google this guy, is something similar to this, all the art, right? He didn't have Facebook back then, so I don't know what it, he would have had his profile picture. Hint number one, don't walk around naked and barefoot everywhere, all right? Because every picture, it has him like that. Um, this is not indigenous to the US, but this is a pit viper, right? How do you recognize a venomous snake? First, the crotalids. They usually have a triangular head. They're usually fatter, bulkier, or their mother would say just huskier, big boned, right? <laughs> They may have a rattle to twerk to warn you, unless it's a water moccasin, right? But they're called pit vipers because right by, in front of their eyes, they have these little pits, all right? That's to sense, that's heat sensing. That's why they're pit vipers. Notice also their eyes are like this. Now usually, if I have a big screen, I have someone come up close to like, look, and then I just slam this picture in front of them. Um, you should not be this close to see the eyes, people, right? Be safe. Take a picture. We can tell by the pattern and how it's acting and how they're doing what it is. Okay, so first off, keep yourself safe. You don't have to kill the snake. This is um, another, this is known as the 100 Pacer. It's out of Taiwan. We had a bite in Louisiana. Uh, recently I had a bite, and I think I have a video of this real quick. Um, this is in Miami. This is known as the 100 Pacer because the Chinese name translates to that because if you get bit by this, guess what? You're usually not gonna live past 100 paces to get to help. So I'm gonna walk 98 paces, or I'm just not gonna get bit, right? I don't know the video, it's fun, These, they're fast, right? So what do you do? The important thing to do is immobilize it. You don't want them moving it all around. You don't have to do a crazy splint or anything, but just basically immobilize it. If you can, keep it at the level of the heart, or lower, or higher, I don't really care, just aim for at the level, right? They're, they're still trying to figure out research-wise what's better. What if the venom comes to you, or do you need to dilute the venom, or prevent compartment syndrome? I usually keep it at the level of the heart, and then once I have any venom going, I raise it to help take care of the swelling, especially if they're bit in the hand like most guys do, all right? You want to place a nice, wide, compressive bandage. Nice, wide, compressive bandage. How that works is it prevents lymphatic distribution, right? It's not super tight, it's not a tourniquet, it's just a wide, compressive bandage. If I get bit here, I'm bandaging it up from here to here. This is the important pre-hospital stuff, okay? Call the specialist. Call me, call Venom 1, call the hospital, give them a heads up. Especially their systemic signs, because they're need, gonna need to start mixing it. On average, how much does it, uh, how long does it take to mix Crovab? If done correctly, it should be no more than 10 minutes. Should be. In reality, how long? To put the order into the pharmacy, do this. If we're mixing it, it, should, it, it takes about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. I had a snake call and we're all having a rolling party at Palmetto Hospital, because so it's faster. We mix it, it's little powder, we put the saline in and we're all rolling it. It took 10 minutes and we were able to start giving it. But on average at the hospital, it's usually about an hour. So they might need the heads up, right? Do not shock. I've had people use car batteries to try to denature the proteins. <laughs> True story, right? I've had someone like another guy that got bit on the tongue in Washington State, he tried car battery to his tongue. How many of you have shopped at, um, what's that called, Bass Pro Shop? Anyone go to the first aid at section? You will find a venom extraction kit. It's gonna suck the venom out. It comes with a razor. It comes with a little suction thing that looks like uh, Austin Powers, although it's not really his bag, baby. Suck, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, 
You do not want to use suction. No matter how cute they are, don't suck the poison out. You don't put a tourniquet on, you don't shock. You do not make a little cut to excise. You do not suck the venom out, or you said you don't wait for symptoms, transport them. Do whatever you gotta do to get them going. All right, because they need to be in the ED um, where the, the antivenom is going to be. We don't do prophylactic fasciotomies. We don't give them Motrin or things that might make them bleed theoretically and stuff. And usually we don't need antibiotics because venom's antimicrobial. It's nice how that works out. So, again, to reiterate what those systemic signs are, multiple times vomiting. Usually I'm going to get bit where? In the hand because I'm a guy and I do stupid stuff. Job security, right? Pain that's already beyond, severe pain. The site might look bloody or bluish. I have, uh, during a break, whatever, I'll gladly show you pictures of, um, I had a little girl that was tagged in the toe, and within 20 minutes by water moccasin, her entire foot's just one giant hematoma. Um, so look for the bad bleeding stuff, and then we'll do the blood test. You need to get them going. They're gonna be monitored for at least 24 hours, okay? Um, cool. I want to make sure I kind of caught up on time. Um, so that's the stuff about the local snakes, right? Black widows, all right? This is the only true, like, local venomous spider in Florida. Brown recluse do make their ways down, which is a, neuro is a cytotoxin, you cause necrosis. Has anyone been bit by black widow? I have. Do you want to know what it was like? It sucked. It was so painful. It caused these horrible spasms. Like, ugh, just someone kept kicking me in the gut. Because um, I got bit right here on my right love handle. I'm harder to kidnap, that's why I stay this shape. <laughs> it's actually rarely a life threat. Um, I was getting my kayak out. I used to kayak to um, medical school in San Francisco. And just like when I worked at Mount Sinai, I actually kayaked to residency. It was awesome. But these are rarely life threat. Best thing to do is treat them with benzos, right? Whether you're versed or anything. And that's actually going to treat the pain well because it stops the spasming and the cramping. Okay? So. I have other stuff in the future, and I'll, I'll get out to you about water envenomings and other stuff like that, but does anybody have any questions about land envenomings? What to do, what not to do? Yes? I have a question. Um, I have an answer. I this a lot. Not for the of course, but... Um, oh, you're making me blush. <laughs> What she said is it's been said by people that if the vent, if you're envenomed and it gets into the vein or artery, you're dead within minutes. Yeah. It's not necessarily true. Okay. But there's a much higher likelihood that it's going to be worse damage. For instance, the guy bit on the tongue the other day, right? Your tongue is very vascular and it got right into one of his veins, which goes directly to the rest of the body. Within a couple hours, his platelets were seven. Seven. It should be like way higher than that. So much more likely to die, but you're not going to all of a sudden die within minutes. Out of the local indigenous snakes, the ones that I really fear, if they don't get any venom quick enough, they can, pro they can die even in like two to three hours, is the eastern diamondback. Because of the neurotoxins, they're, they're big, they're aggressive, they have a lot of venom, they're very toxic. So it's highly toxic, plus they deliver more, usually. Those are what I fear. Um, so that's within a couple hours. Otherwise, you have time. But during that time, it usually sucks for the patient. You need another part? Yeah. There's no hospital here that has anything in the hospital. It has to come from one of you that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I, I thought... I'm asking. Oh. I don't know your hospitals directly. Okay. You would know. I, yeah. Let me answer that because it's part of my question. Awesome. All Polk County, we have five hospitals here in Polk County. Can everyone hear them in the back too? We have five hospitals here in Polk County. I'm going to sign it. All five hospitals carry profab in appropriate amounts to treat the nation for the first 48 hours. 
what I'm running into different stories is coral snake in them about natural shortage or they're not thinking anymore or expiration dates. And I was wondering if you could enlighten them. Excellent. So, what he said was that. Five hospitals in Polk County, all five say they have enough anti-venom uh, to treat envenomings for up to 48 hours, um, which is with the CroFab side, which is awesome. And you would know that also, because <laughs> um, they're a local CroFab guy. Um, with the, then the thing is, what if multiple people get bit? I had seven in the last week, but we have means to get it. In terms of the question being the coral anti-venom, there's always talks about shortages. Do they make it anymore? Did it expire? Almost everything, the expiration date of when it's most useful is kind of expired. It's all off-label use, to be honest. Most, you know, we use what's in date, this and that. Um, they did stop manufacturing the antivenom coral snakes for quite a bit. And I do know that we had to wrap up, but um, because it wasn't making them much money. It's very expensive to make. It's very expensive to to create and everything like that and package it and put it out there and how often do you get a coral snake bite, this and that. They did start making it again. There, there was the shortage, but it's always been around. There's never, oh, there's no, no more anti-venom. It's been around. We have it. We have it at Gainesville. We have it in Jacksonville. We have it in Miami. There are places that have it. Um, probably the better thing to do, and they started remaking it. You have coral anti-venom. Uh, there's someone in Lake County that has it because he deals with a lot, or, uh, outside of Orlando, because he milks the coral snakes. Um, so he, and he might get bit. So he has, he goes with his little cooler to the hospital if he gets bit or anything like that. Um, you have uh, Captain uh, Kiefer with a Nature Coast. He has coral antivenom, I believe. I have to look at his list again. But we have these indexes that have it, um, and we'll bring him. Probably the better thing to do is, and something I'm going to start working on, um, is having everybody ready and plan so who to get in touch with at a state level, great seeing you, um, to know where the resources, because we can kind of, we don't need every hospital to have the coral, any venom, but as early on, if we d identify need through poison control or anything like that, we can get it there. But the, real, the basic answer to what you said is there is anti-venom. It's around. Okay. And being made again. With being here in Polk County, So if I were to be writing the protocol as far as the coral snake examination, um, what would would it be close to the facility, stabilized, and let them take care of it, or would you do a longer transport time to Orlando or Tampa? I would if they're stable and usually it's gonna be if you confirm that it's a coral. Yeah, assuming, assuming you confirm that it was a coral and they, they have a bite, I would transport them there if you can. How far are we talking, Tampa? Because I'm like Basically, Miami and the an hour, I would take them there. That's my opinion. Would, what? I would take them there. Take them to the, to the location. Yeah. Um, and we could talk about looking where people are actually getting bit in the hospitals and another about getting the antivenom to them. And as I see where Joe Kiefer is and Lake County comes on board, then we can kind of re-see. But right now I would take them there because it's going to save time from them negotiating. Because the, otherwise the hospitals have to pre-negotiate things. We can get it to you. I can get it any venom anywhere right away from Venom One and other places. I'll drive it down lights and sirens. I got my woo-woos and my bling bling on my truck. I'll bring it. Um, but right for coral snakes, it, it'd probably be best just to bring them right there. Because if they have it, they probably know how to use it. They're not afraid to. And actually, part of the people testing it, the new batch, or the new batches of coral anti-venom, Tampa, they're, they're on board. I know that they have. Right. <laughs> so I would just draw, transfer there. Excellent question. Anything else? Yes? Why compress? You're saying Coban or a strap or something like that? He's asking about my wide uh, compression bandage. And I almost everything's wide because I'm wide. No, but um, yeah, like Coban, but not too tight. Right? We don't want to tourniquet it, even like if we're doing venipuncture. Um, Coban, gauze, gauze roll, anything like that. Ace bandage, excellent question. Next question, why not suction? Why, why, not? why not suction? Why not suction? Who wants to do it? No, it actually causes more damage, and it doesn't do any good. It's been proven scientifically with good research that it not only does it not work to get venom out, it does more damage. 
Sean Bush did, um, who's a, another venom guy, a venomologist or toxinologist um, out of uh, Eastern Carolina. And he uh, did some really well done scientific research to prove that it causes more damage. Excellent question. Yes? Did you say about fluid administration? Yeah, so when you have, if you have one, fluid administration, if, obviously if they're hypotense or anything like that or they've been vomiting, it's good to help get things on board. Otherwise, uh, you don't have to like slam them with multiple liters or anything like that. Um, in general, all my protocols for all my counties and towns, Hallandale and Alachua, Lake County and stuff, we, give, we, get, we establish an IV and a little bit of pain medicine and do fluids like KVO. Good question, all right? Um, my contact info is up here. That's my cell phone. You can call me on banana phone. Um, email with any questions, anything like that. A lot of you, I know I have a lot of Facebook, Polk County friends. Um, but with that, thanks for having me. Thank you for what you all do.